This week on Rams 360. I need your energy and I need you to have fun. The game is that simple. October at SoFi Stadium continues with week six in the National Football League. Ah, let's go! Come on. Support is something now you should see, but you feel. It gives you the most security that I am loved and I belong somewhere. All this and more on Rams 360. You have been so brave. You always did everything we asked you to do and you've been just a model patient. And I'm just so excited that you finished. And we have a little surprise for you. So we're gonna have a... What? No, it's better than candy. We have some visitors that wanna come and surprise you because you are just such a special patient to us. Today we are partnered with Cedar Sinai and we have some really special gifts that we are getting ready to deliver today. Oh. I wonder who this would be. Oh. Hi Victoria. How are you today? <laughs> you saying hi to Rampage? He's super friendly. <laughs> My Chemo Fairy talks about the journey of one of the fairies becoming ill and going through chemotherapy treatment and getting better and being able to put that in a book. That's huge because part of healing and part of their treatment truly is trying to give normalcy to what is already so not normal. Especially the younger kids, they don't know that cancer's scary. They know that the situation they're in is scary, but as they start to feel better, they just want to play and be normal. Victoria, I heard that you have been doing such a great job, and in order to celebrate you and to offer you a little gift, I am really, really happy to share that you are the first person here at Cedar sinai to receive a My Chemo Fairy doll and book. This is for you. Yeah, so now you have your very own doll and book that can be here on the journey with you. When Victoria received hers, we read it that day. She read it to me. I held the book, she read it from cover to cover. And just how her eyes lit up seeing, wow, they get me. They get exactly what I went through. In a magical fairy kingdom, there lived a very special family of fairies. This fairy family was full of love, and they had fun just being together. One day, Brother Fairy was not feeling well, so they took him to the doctor. Victoria is a very, very special young lady. Her grandma is a wonderful caregiver to her and is raising her and her older sisters to be just delightful young women. She is the sweetest thing when I first met her when she was six or seven. So spunky, so funny, but also when I got to see her vulnerable side, she is just the sweetest, most thoughtful girl. The next day the doctor told Brother Fairy and, the, and his family that he had an illness called cancer. I asked her, do you remember when I came into the room and told you that you were sick the first time, do you remember us talking about the cancer diagnosis? And she said yes. And we haven't really talked about that since. It was really scary for her, you know, like for any other child. And it's here in a book that anybody can read. To feel validated like that, I think it's huge for her. He said it was okay and normal to be scared, but he had a special medicine called chemotherapy that would help him get rid of the cancer. Joanne, excellent. You know, real caring, loving, and she has a way of making uh, Victoria feel comfortable uh, when she come here for her treatments and just talking to her and giving her gifts and, you know, making it easy. To be able to give that support to her where she trusts me, she trusts us when times are hard, when she has to go through a procedure and just say, I want to hold your hand, Jojo. I'm like, you can have my hand as long as you want. To be exact, Victoria loved to come here. She loved to come here to see everybody. 
this is what we're here for. We were made for this. We are here for you because this was not a choice, but we're gonna, we're gonna make the most of it. Hi, Saria, how are you? This is our friend Rampage, hi. We have some toys for you. I think that there's an excitement that an organization like the LA Rams can bring to our patients that we just can't bring. I definitely do not make them as excited as they are when they get to see players and mascots and cheerleaders and, and everyone else because it lets them know that they are important not just to their family and to their Cedar sinai community, but to the greater community and that they're not alone. And so it's great to have partners that can help provide that. I can bring it that very book home. Yes, you can bring it home and you can read it before bedtime. You can read it whenever you want. My chemo fairy for us really validates what we do here at Cedar sinai and how we care for our patients. The impact is huge and that we have now because of our partnership with the LA Rams and the kindness and thoughtfulness of, of Tremaine. I mean, thank you so much for thinking of our patients here. Meeting him, I thought to myself like, he's not just being mean, raw, raw, like feel general for no reason. Like he's done it from a genuine place. And I recognize that because I could see that same look at the other players. I feel like you have to be great wherever your feet are planted. People want to have these kind of ideas, these grand gestures, like I need to help people, I need to do this. I think start where you're at. I always wanted to kind of be like a conduit to just like anything I can do that can serve any population here that may include the kids, may include people that are going through uh, inequalities or, or homelessness. Like if I have the tools, resources to help, that's what I should be doing. To me, it means being an ally to someone who's going through it. It looks insurmountable at first. And to know that mentally you're going through it just as much as you are physically, that someone can do something as small as just like, hey, I'm thinking about you. You know, here's something to make you smile, something to make you laugh. Um, you know, you're serving that, that person's soul. Support is something now you should see, but you feel, right? You feel in the physical when people are there, you feel in the mental when people give you security that, hey, I got you. Like, you fall, I'm gonna help you up, or whatever it is. Gives you the emotional security that I am loved, I belong somewhere. So support, I've been blessed to have a lot of it. And I think it's be a blessing to give that kind of support as well. I was thinking about this, like when was the first time I actually met him? And I met him when he was a ninth grader. And my husband used to do a beef dinner at the house where we would get barbecue and invite the entire offensive line over to our home. You know, even before I met him, I heard murmurs of Jeff Pastrick, right? You know, like Coach P, he's one mean, green, whatever, you know, like he's a tough guy. And I'm like, oh God, like, sounds awful. I would be like, well, how many players are gonna be there? And he would tell me 10, but order for 20. And the first time I met Tree, it was at that beef dinner. Meeting him, I thought to myself like, He's not just being mean, raw, raw, like feel general for no reason. Like he's done it from a genuine place. And I recognize that because I could see that same look how he looked in the other players and, you know, over the years, like just kind of trusted and leaned into more what he was saying and things worked out. When I went to Clemson, he would text me all the time. I'd come back home and breaks and work out with him, try different things he was trying and learning. And he was becoming a pioneer in the industry of offensive line development too. So being able to use that as an edge to come back. You know. He would text me before every game. I still have his text messages now. For my Clemson games, he texted me before each one, and he texted me at halftime. I wouldn't respond, but I'd just see it. And they're like, ugh, like I missed the block. I know I'm gonna get six text messages. And I just remember after each one, he would grill me, but then be like, hey, like, I'm proud of you, dude. Like, you're doing it. Even up until the end, man, he was, he was one of my number one supporters. My chemo fairy started um, really because we were living it. January of 2019, Jeff was not feeling great. He had an NFL training class in already. So we had 14 guys here that agents had sent, um, and he ended up with a kidney stone. So he had gotten up one night, gotten sick. He, we ended up going to a, a local ER. He had Burkitt's lymphoma, so it's a non-Hodgkin's um, lymphoma, but a, a large B-cell, extremely aggressive cancer. 
So when Jeff first got diagnosed, his sister had made these, what she called, you got this bags for every round of chemo. So Jeff had originally 16 different rounds of chemo. So she would make a bag for every one of those chemo cycles. One day walking down the staircase after I went and got the bag, I said, hey, it looks like my chemo fairy came last night. And it clicked. And I remember texting Steph and I was like, I think I've got an idea. Like a fairy, right? You think of a, like a magical entity or person that's coming out to lend assistance or give you a hand or help make your dreams come true. And I think that it's a perfect comparison to what we want to try to be able to emulate and help kind of give the effect of, hey, like, you know, we're not magical, but we're here to help. When you go through cancer, I cannot tell you how many days, whether that's the patient or the immediate caregiver, is like, I can't do this anymore. Especially them going through something so tough at such a young age, let them know that that, that magic, that, that fun, that good energy is still there, and you got people that are with you all the way. If this little magical fairy in the bag that it comes in in the story gives the patient and their family some encouragement that they're gonna get to the other side, they're gonna go into remission, that is the whole premise of this, is just bringing hope and joy into these families that there's not a lot of hope and joy happening. I didn't know they were up. <laughs> How are you? I'm fantastic. It's so good seeing you. It is awesome seeing you. It is really good. Really good. One, I love you, right? Know that. And Jeff loves you. And I know he is looking all over every day. You know, you sent me that text on Saturday. And that text said, you know, I wish I could have told him or I wish I could have shown him. And for you to help us bring my chemo fairy, which is Jeff's legacy, one of Jeff's legacies, all the way to LA is, I don't even have words. I don't even have words. And I'm just super grateful. And I know his sister is super grateful and our family is super grateful. And I know that unintentionally, this is just one of the other things that treat us, right? And I'm just super, super proud of you. You know, every time I, I see you and what you're doing in the community, aside from this, that is part of him in you. That's how he lives in you. I am just grateful for your, your servant, humble leadership. You got this every day, every day. Don't ever question that. Jeff, he was, he was a good man. He was tough on you. He supported you through whatever. And he wanted you to take the same mentality you applied in sports and applied in real life. You know, his thing was to keep fighting, to battle every day. Good morning. Got my little pick line here going in and all kinds of stuff, but it's 5.30 in the morning. You know, I'm out here doing some laps and getting some exercise. Just wondering, man, what the hell are you doing? You know, what excuses you got today to stay in bed and not do this and not do that? You need to get your butt up and, uh, you know, make, make the best of your day. Prototypically, speaking NFL-wise, like I was a long shot. I was weak, I was slim. I didn't really think too much of myself. I just wanted to come and help out, do my job, but he saw more in me. He believed in me a lot when I didn't believe in myself. He showed me I, I could always make more of myself if I really, really applied. You know, how far would you really, really go? And he said, whatever makes you passionate, makes you alive, so you should really go after it. And I, you know, good, bad, or ugly, he's always taking that mindset and coming back to it, so. I think that's something in his legacy I, I want to for sure carry on and try to live through. Coming up next on Rams 360. Ah! Let's go, fellas. Not a way to eat, fellas.
move, P Rob. You better get down. You better get down. You better get down. Get down. I could have lifted him to heaven. And that's why when I tackled him, I didn't even say nothing. I just ran the other way. First and goal from the five. Hey, ball to A-Rod right here. Matthew Stafford throws left side. Oh, my God. Allen Robinson, airborne, high points the football. Sorry. Oh, dude. Boom, 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 boom. Get him out of here. We know y'all got us. No. We know y'all got us. We know y'all got us. We ain't tripping. We ain't tripping. Let's go get some water for three plays and y'all back out there. Good job right there, Ernest. I mean, really good. We good, baby. We good. We good, baby. Let's go. Another jet sweep. A handoff, Skorana. He's got speed. Oh, Benny Stowe for the Teddy. For the Teddy. And he walks in. And he walks in. Let's go. Let's go, Benny Stowe. He definitely he turned me up. He turned me up for sure. <laughs> we really, Bobby was clean. We really the flyest team in the league, though, too. Yes, sir. Good running, fellas. Hey, let's go dominate. Three and out. Let's go. Good, coach. Good job, baby. First and goal here. Eason to the end zone. It is tipped. It is intercepted. Taken away by Nick Scott. Man, uh, yeah. you made the play. Uh. Come here, come What's here, up, come here, come here. Listen, now, you should pick that, but we got it. And we now it. next time we're gonna make the play. Let's go. Okay. That was you? Yeah. Man, thank you. <laughs> Matthew Stafford under center. Throws left side. Allen Robinson, airborne, high points the football. Touchdown, LA! <laughs> Stay tuned for more Rams 360. I need your energy, and I need you to have fun. The game is that simple. October at SoFi Stadium continues with week six in the National Football League. Ah, let's go. Recommit to your greatness. Believe in your brothers, and we're going to win this game. Let's go. Matthew Stafford under center. Throws left side. Allen Robinson, airborne, high points the football. Touchdown. <laughs> Put it on the ship, little kids. Put it on the ship. Hand off Skoranek. He's got speed. He's got the edge. He goes in on yeah. top. Ben Skoranek. Yeah. Touchdown. Yeah. LA. Yeah. Let's go, Vinny Stowe. Here's the rush. Blitz from the blind side. Rims, he's got it again. Last week, his first career sack. Now he's gone back to back. To the end zone. It is tipped. It is intercepted. It's in the win column for the Los Angeles Rams. They found a way. Immediately, if that's the case. That, that's kind of the goal. Um, there are, as you know, a, a lot of layers to that as well with moving parts on. You know, all right, well, do you have the spots? Who's going to be up for the 48? Things like that. Stay tuned for more Rams 360. Sean, any update on Joe Nopum? Yeah, he did. Uh, he ruptured his Achilles, so he'll get surgery probably sometime this week, and, and he'll be out for the year. Um, and then the other injuries, um, Grant Haley, 
got a grade two ACL sprain, um, probably four to six weeks, and he's a likely candidate for um, IR. How do you move forward without Joe? Do you bring in another veteran tackle? Do you sign one? Do you trade for one? How do you adjust to that? Yeah, all of those things are possibilities. Um, you know, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll be looking at that after I get done with you guys. Um, Les and I will put our heads together with his group and some of our coaches and, and try to figure out what are the best steps uh, moving forward. Brian Allen, Van Jefferson, Troy Hill, and Bobby Brown. Immediately, if that's the case, that that's kind of the goal. Um, there are, as you know, a, a lot of layers to that as well with moving parts on, you know, all right, well, do you have the spots? Who's going to be up for the 48? Things like that. But um, if those guys are ready to go, they make us a better football team immediately. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next week for more Rams 360.